Hi everyone, this is Ram from Informatica Global Customer Support Team. In this video, we'll see about DGD. Now, the main agenda of this video is what is a DGD, uh, types of elements in XML, and how to declare elements in DGD, how to define occurrence of an element in DGD, and followed by a quick demo on the drawbacks of DTD. Now, what is a DTD? DTD stands for Document Type Definition. Now, same as XML, DTD is also governed and owned by W3C organization. Now, DTD is used for defining the structure of an XML. So, as I told in my previous video, as I am a car manufacturer and shop owners will come to me, so that uh, shop owners will come to me and they will give an XML file. So, when I when when I give a when I have a sam when I am using a sample XML near me, then we have a drawback. So as I already discussed in the previous video, so that's why I will prepare a DTD file and I will give the DTD file to the shop owners and shop owners will prepare their own XML file based on the DTD and they will give back the uh, XML file to me and I will validate the XML file based on the DTD file which I have, I have prepared. So this, that means DTD is used for defining the structure of an XML. That means I am defining, that means DT, I am defining a DTD how the structure of an XML should be. Now we can define the structure in our own format in the DTD file. That means we can define whatever the format we need. And using this DTD only, we validate the XML file that we come to us. Okay. Next, what are the types of elements in XML? So there are two types of elements, simple element and compound element. Simple element is nothing but if the element contains the data, so it is a simple element. Now compound element means if the element doesn't contain the data, but it contains the chain elements. If you see here, person doesn't contain the data, it has a chain elements, person ID and person name. So person, but if you see person ID, it contains the data one and person name Ram. So these are the uh, simple elements and person is a compound element. Now how to declare elements in DTD? So in order to declare these elements, this is an XML file declaration. Now in order to declare elements in DTD, so we need to follow this syntax. So simple element declaration is and element, element name, and type. So the type, so type can be PC data or C data. PC means parsable character data. C data means character data. We'll see this in practical demo. And the example, if you see, so element and person name. So element name, I'm taking as a person name. So if you see, this is a person name I'm taking, I'm going to declare has PC data. That means parsable character data. Now compound element declaration, the syntax is element, compound element name, and the child elements. If you see example, person. So person is an compound element here. So that's why person, person ID, person name are the child elements. That's why person ID, person name need to be put in a brackets. And these two uh, child elements should be separated by a comma. Next, you, so you may have a doubt. So as I told in the previous video that I am a car manufacturer and there are oh, shop owners will come to me and they will give the XML file and uh, I will validate it uh, based on my DTD file. That means first I will write the DTD file and later shopkeepers will write their XML file based on the DTD and they will give to me. But here, if you see, I am I have an XML file and I am writing the DTD, uh, uh, DTD elements based on this XML file. So you may have a doubt. So first we will write DTD file or XML file. So the simple answer is, First, we'll write the DTD file only. So then what is this XML file? So this XML content is not the actual content that is given by the shop owners. So this is the XML structure which is present in my brain. And based on the structure only, I am putting this DTD on the paper. Okay. So that means this is just a normal structure, XML structure, which is present in my brain. And based on this XML, I am writing my DTD file. So after writing this DTD file, we'll give this DTD to the shop owners and shop owners will write the X, uh, actual XML file and they will give back the XML file to me. Now, based on this DTD and I will validate the XML file and then I will give the product to the shop owners. Okay, so this is a doubt cleared and how to define occurrence of an element in DTD. So in order to define the occurrence of an element, so we have symbols, so uh, star plus question mark and without symbol. So star means minimum is zero and maximum is infinite. Minimum is one and maximum is infinite for plus and question mark minimum zero, maximum one without symbol minimum one, maximum one. That means if I put a star in front of person ID, that means person ID, you should, if you don't give person ID also, there won't be problem. If you give also, there won't be problem and you can give n number of times. And if I put a plus in front of person ID, that means the person ID should, at least it should occur one time and it can be any number of times. And if I put question mark, then it, if, if it is not there also, no problem. If it is, if it is there, then you can declare only one time. 
So if you see an example here, so this is the element compound element declaration. After the compound element declaration, you can provide these uh, occurrences. So if you see person name plus, that means person name can be minimum one time only, or minimum one time we at least we need to provide and maximum any number of times you can provide. If you put a question mark, that means minimum if you don't give also no problem, maximum only one time you can give the person name. So let's start with a quick demo. Now, as I told, first we need to uh, create a DTD file. So that's why if you see, click on new DTD document type definition and you can see the DTD got created sample DTD. So this is a sample. You can remove this. Now, before creating a DTD, as I told, we need to have some structure in our mind. So that's why I'm taking a new one. So you can take sample XML. So I'm going to create a sample XML. OK, so this is the so it is not required. So you can remove this. And this is a sample XML file which is present in my brain. So based on this XML file, I'm going to define a DTD. Now, if you see, so here car order is a root element and inside it, there is a products. So yesterday we discussed products and inside the products, we have a product and again, a root, again, a compound element. And in that we have product code, product name, product quantity as a simple elements. Now, after that, we have address as a compound element and we have line, city, state, country as a simple elements. Now, how to start writing the DTD? Now, the only trick that we can follow easily is, so first define the simple elements. So if you see simple elements here are four is there and here three simple elements are there. So start defining it from the bottom of the file. So let me first save this file. So save, I'm going to save. So see, so I'm going to save it here. So car order, so this is a car order dot DTD file. Now, so I'm going to define from the bottom. So first element and so if you see here, so country. So country is there. So that's why element, element name, country and you need to provide hash PC data. Next, next we have state city line. So you will need to write element state. So I'm going to take in small letters only. So state as PC data. Next city. So element as these are simple elements. So that's why element element name and the type. So you can call this PC data as a type or you can call this as a content type, content model and element line space hash PC data. So these four are completed. Now we have three more remaining. So product quantity, product name, product code. So I'm going to define this as element broad quantity as PC data. PC data in the sense parsable data. That means whenever in an XML file, whenever here, whenever, whenever if, if you see parsable data, so this is a product quantity. Whenever an XML parser is going to read this, so it should parse the string, then only it can able to identify the end, end of the string. So end tag, then only it can able to identify. So that's why I'm telling. So whenever XML parser encounters the string, so it just parse the string. So when it parses only, then whenever it encounters this less than symbol, then it will treat a less than and uh, this black slash symbol, then it will, the XML parser treat this as a end, end of the end tag. Okay. So next is element product quantity product name. So what is the product name we have defined product full product name as PC data. Next is again element the so product ID. So we are going to define product uh, product code. So product code hash PC data. So simple elements declaration is completed. Now let's go with the compound element declaration. Now if you see compound elements are car order is there next to products next product and address are the compound elements. Now in this first to define the innermost compound element. The innermost one is product. So I'm going to define the product. So here I'm going to define. So element product 
and in this what are the child elements that i need to write product code product name comma product quantity and and after product what are the next innermost element you can see products is there and address is there. so let's define from the bottom only so address first we need to define so element address and the child elements are line city state country and next one is products so we need to define the products so inside the products only one element is there that is a product so i am going to define this as element products so product so products is also declared and the final element is car order so we need to define that car order also so car order as element car order so products comma address so if you see now if you click here well formed so well formed as i told well formed in the sense you are able to read the data or not so it is a readable because you are able to read the data so that it is readable now validate now validate this tcd yes it is valid so every syntax and semantics everything is correct now this is a sample xml which is present in my brain now uh, this is not the actual xml now i have prepared this tcd file and i am going to give this tcd to car owner now car car shop owner now what they will do they will create their own xml file so they are going to create like this now if you see it is asking for the dtt now if you want you can give a dtd now schema is nothing but xst so you can give so dtd so here you can give car order so this is a dtd so i am going to provide now click okay now here you can see car order so whatever the content that we got so it is based on the dtd so every element we got now you can see doc on the top doc type doc type is nothing but document type definition that means i am going to attach the document type definition so that's why doc type and car order car order why it came because the root element that we took is car order so that's why how how, how it will get to know the root element is car order by default the first most element which is present in dtd will be treated as a root element so that's why we got car order and system system is nothing but the, if the path is in present in your local system then it is uh, we need to write system if the path in some another vm or some other location or some other data center or in any remote desktop location you need to give public here so the location of the dtd is this one it will get you will get automatically now what we are going to do now product code now the shop owner they will just fill this one product name they wanted a range rover and product quantity so they need 10 and the line they need for one indiranagar and city it is bangalore and state it is karnataka and country india so you can give in capitals as well now this is well from so they now they have given they have they wrote and they have given to me now i'm going to well check well formed or not and valid or not it is a valid xml file now for example if i provide here product quantity product name product code as question mark that means minimum zero and maximum is one so product code if you see so product code minimum zero even if you remove there won't be any problem so still it is valid now if i provide if i provide also there is no problem so there is no problem now for example if i uh, if i change this to plus that means minimum at least should be one and maximum is infinite now if for example if i just remove this now you can see the error content model content model of element so content model in the sense the type product disallows element product name at this position that means first some other element should be there so what is that element you need to provide that element so that is a error so if you when i provide this then it will be removed now you can save this xml file so i'm going to save this xml file the same location so this is a car order xml.xml now 
if you see in the dgd so this is a syntax that we need to follow so element should be in capital letter so you need not to provide in small letter so it will throw an error so provide in capital letter and also the element name if you have multiple names then just provide uh, just divide them with a hyphen so no need to provide uh, as a camel case so the capital letters and all so it is not it is not recommended to provide you just provide a hyphen and uh, xml is case sensitive if you see for example i have given products uh, i have given product 1 here okay i have given product 1 so here also product 1 and when i go here so this is xml product 1 so this is not a product so when i just save this so we are going to get an error products disallows element product at this position that means whatever the so that means whatever the element that you have defined you need to provide the same even if you provide p capital here as it is a case sensitive if you provide p capital here element product so you can remove this one now if you see here you are going to get an error L products disallows element product at this position so you need to provide in a capital letter p so then it is valid and product quantity if you see we are having 10 so instead of 10 i am going to write 10 in string but still it is valid now but here why because here you didn't provide any data type that needs to be stored so that's why for you can still it, it is valid now if i provide ram also it is still valid but the quantity should be in integer so that's why in dtds you cannot enforce the data you cannot enforce the data type that needs to be stored so that is the disadvantage of ttd now uh, drawbacks it is a old way of defining the structure so in the previous uh, versions we we use it to use in the uh, in the previous projects and cannot define the data types to the elements so data type validations cannot be done so as i shown so data types validations cannot be done now the references for you is you can check this dtd and schema reference for in order to get overview of dtd and you can also check this link and you can also see how to how we use in a power center uh example transformation using this dtd file now if you love this video we are uh, we hear from you you can give our valuable feedback at support videos at the or at our twitter channel thank you thank you for watching this video